March 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 21 and 22 from the Old Testament. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was approaching along the road to Atharam, he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoner. So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into our hand, then we will utterly destroy their cities. The Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of the place was called Hormah. Then they traveled from Mount Hor by the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient along the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread or water, and we detest this worthless food. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and they bit the people. Many people of Israel died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he would take away the snakes from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous snake and set it on a pole. When anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole, so that if a snake had bitten someone, when he looked at the bronze snake, he lived. The Israelites traveled on and camped in Oboth. Then they traveled on from Oboth and camped at Ai Abarim in the wilderness that is before Moab, on the eastern side. From there they moved on and camped in the valley of Zered. From there they moved on and camped on the other side of the Arnon, in the wilderness that extends from the regions of the Amorites. For Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. This is why it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, Waheb is Sapa, and the Wadis the Arnon and the slope of the valleys that extends to the dwellings of Ar and the falls off at the border of Moab. And from there they traveled to Beer. That is the well where the Lord spoke to Moses. Gather the people and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing to it. The well which the princes dug, which the leaders of the people opened with their scepters and their staffs, and from the wilderness they traveled to Matna, and from Matna to Nahaliel, and from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley that is in the country of Moab, near the top of Pisgah, which overlooks the wilderness. Then Israel sent messengers to King Sihon of the Amorites, saying, Let us pass through your land. We will not turn aside into the fields or into the vineyards, nor will we drink water from any well, but we will go along the king's highway until we pass your borders. But Sion did not permit Israel to pass through his border. He gathered all his forces together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. When he came to Jahaz, he fought against Israel. But the Israelites defeated him in battle and took possession of his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, as far as the Ammonites for the border of the Ammonites was strongly defended. So Israel took all of these cities, and Israel settled in all the cities of the Amorites, in Hezbon and in all its villages. For Hezbon was the city of King Sion of the Amorites. Now he had fought against the former king of Moab, and had taken all of his land from his control as far as the Arnon. That is why those who speak in Proverbs say, Come to Hezbon, let it be built. Let the city of Sion be established. For fire went out from Hezbon, a flame from the city of Sion. It has consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to you, Moab! You are ruined, O people of Chemosh! He has made his sons fugitives and his daughters the prisoners of King Sihon of the Amorites. We have overpowered them. Heshbon has perished as far as Dibon. 
we have shattered them as far as Nofa, which reaches to Medeba. So the Israelites lived in the land of the Amorites. Moses sent spies to reconnoiter Jezer, and they captured its villages and dispossessed the Amorites who were there. Then they turned and went up by the road to Bashan. And King Og of Bashan and all his forces marched out against them to do the battle at Edrei. And the Lord said to Moses, Do not fear him, for I have delivered him and all his people and his land into your hand. You will do to him what you did to King Sihon of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. So they defeated Og, his sons, and all his people until there were no survivors, and they possessed his land. The Israelites traveled on and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan River across from Jericho. Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that the Israelites had done to the Amorites, and the Moabites were greatly afraid of the people because they were so numerous. The Moabites were sick with fear because of the Israelites. So the Moabites said to the elders of Midian, Now this mass of people will look up everything around us as the bull devours the grass of the field. Now Balak, son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at this time. And he sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor at Pethor, which is by the Euphrates River in the land of Amah, to summon him, saying, Look, a nation has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the earth, and they are settling next to me. So now please come and curse this nation for me, for they are too powerful for me. Perhaps I will prevail so that we may conquer them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whoever you bless is blessed, and whoever you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fee for the divination in their hand. They came to Balaam and reported to him the words of Balak. He replied to them, Stay here tonight. And I will bring back to you whatever word the Lord may speak to me. So the princes of Moab stayed with Balaam. And God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent a message to me, saying, Look, a nation has come out of Egypt, and it covers the face of the earth. Come now and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps I will be able to defeat them and drive them out. But God said to Balaam, You must not go with them. You must not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam got up in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Go to your land, for the Lord has refused to permit me to go with you. So the princes of Moab departed and went back to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Balak again sent princes more numerous and more distinguished than the first. And they came to Balaam and said, Thus says Balak, son of Zippor, Please do not let anything hinder you from coming to me. For I will honor you greatly, and whatever you tell me I will do. So come, put a curse on this nation for me. Balaam replied to the servants of Balak, Even if Balak would give me his palace, Full of silver and gold, I could not transgress the commandment of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore, please stay the night here also, that I may know what more the Lord might say to me. God came to Balaam that night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, get up and go with them. But the word that I will say to you, that you must do. So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. Then God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Now he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road, with his sword drawn in his hand. So the donkey turned aside from the road and went into the field. But Balaam beat the donkey to make her turn back to the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a path among the vineyards, where there was a wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he beat her again. Then the angel of the Lord went farther 
and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she crouched down under Balaam. Then Balaam was angry, and he beat his donkey with a staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, You have made me look stupid. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am not I your donkey that you have ridden ever since I was yours until this day? Have I ever attempted to treat you this way? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand. So he bowed his head and threw himself down with his face to the ground. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? Look, I have come out to oppose you, because what you are doing is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned from me these three times. If she had not turned from me, I would have killed you, but saved her alive. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood against me in the road. So now, if it is evil in your sight, I will go back home. But the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but you may only speak the word that I will speak to you. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab, which was on the border of the Arnon at the boundary of his territory. Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send again and again to you to summon you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? Balaam said to Balak, Look, I have come to you. Now am I able to speak just anything? I must speak only the word that God puts in my mouth. So Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kiriath Hazoth. And Balak sacrificed bulls and sheep and sent some to Balaam and to the princes who were with him. Then on the next morning, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamoth Baal. From there he saw the extent of the nation. God, stories like this, even though they're uh, funny at times about a donkey that talks, there's also some powerful lessons that are in this story. You know, Balaam is isn't as dutiful as he comes across. He's actually, it's all about the money that he's trying to get from Balak uh, and even more money potentially from Balak. And you knew his true heart. I think that's the most important part of this story. You knew what his true heart was throughout this. Uh, you know, I think about us and, and how we can look good on the outside. We can put on a good front. We can appear to be doing all the right things. Yet, just like the Pharisees, our, our insides can, can be destroyed with sin. I love what, the, what you had the donkey say. Am, I, am not I your donkey that you have ridden ever since I was yours until this day? Have I ever attempted to treat you this way? And I think sometimes when, when we go through life and something seems off... We should really pay attention to it and not so much to cry out to you to fix things, but perhaps to take the time to look at ourselves and see if the insides of us, what we're choosing as sin over you, is actually causing us in this situation to either feel really far from you, feel like you're not listening to us, to feel like you're pushing us up against a brick wall um, like the donkey was. When things in our life seem a little bit odd, I think it's really good for us to pause and, and really take a look at that. I know you want us to cry out to you and depend on you and, and talk to you through prayer. And then we really need to look inside of ourselves, inside of our heart, and see if it's not sin that we're choosing to keep in our life, overdoing your will. I was just having an interesting conversation with someone last night about that that if we say that we are Christian yet we continue to choose 
a sin throughout our life and we choose that sin over following you are we really Christian are we really saved it was an interesting conversation <laughs> but God I think that part of the story has to do with that that we really need to look at the fruit in our, our own lives and if if our lives aren't producing fruit if our lives aren't following your will something will be off and we've all been around long enough to know when something is off in our life and I think we need to pay really close attention to that so God today can you help us with some of those details help us be intentional about realizing when things are a little bit different in our life and, and maybe we should pay attention to something that just has always been a certain way ever since we have known and now something seems to be going in a different direction and to be aware of that for your glory of course in your son's name we pray amen <laughs>